Hey friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another Ask Wrestle Juice. You guys left a ton of great questions on the community tab in the questions thread that I posted. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. I cannot answer them all though, but I'm going to do what I can. Uh, so yeah, before I get started, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're going to start today with uh, a question that was asked in a bunch of different ways about the same general topic. I'll just start off with Chazza asking in a hypothetical world, if Triple H was to leave WWE to start up a new promotion, which five guys currently signed to WWE or free agents would you like to see join him? Now, what I plan to do sometime this week is a video where I take a look at all the free agents in wrestling and create the best possible new promotion for Triple H if he were to do this. Now, let's rewind to last week. We covered this over at Going In Raw. Uh, the last remnants of NXT 1.0 behind the scenes seems to be uh, uh, on the chopping block which is kind of an ugly term for people being released. Of course, William Regal, Samoa Joe, the road dog, Jesse James, and uh, a bunch of others, some writers, were all released from NXT. And uh, uh, the, the question that we explored over it going in Raw is basically, how does Triple H not feel completely and totally soul-sucked and unmanned by his father-in-law taking the brand that Triple H put his heart and soul into and completely ripping it to shreds. There was a report not long ago, not a report, I think it was just Dave Meltzer speculating on the obvious that Triple H will never leave WWE because how it would affect the family dynamic. And I look at myself as a person, as a human being with an ego, and I think of, of anybody that has any sort of pride, how they can look at this, how they would uh, be involved in a company where your own father-in-law, because it's clear, it is obvious as day that NXT was Triple H's own I, I hate to use this term, but I mean, I, I will. It was his canvas. It was his art. He poured everything he had into the creation of NXT. And he seemed publicly very proud about that fact. And now he's got to go home to his wife, whose father is completely and totally dismantling or letting Nick Khan completely and totally Dismantle it. It's actually really fascinating. I'd love to do a, a wider scope video about WWE's path to being sold because I feel like it's a pretty obvious one. If you go back a couple of years ago and you remember Triple H talking about global localization, there was a period of time prior to AEW when WWE was seriously considering becoming the end all be all in pro wrestling. They wanted performance centers across the globe. They were going to use the network to, um, to, 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 to basically be the distribution outlet for a number of NXT programs of promotions around the world where they would then air the, 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 the property, the actual programs where you'd have NXT Japan, NXT China, NXT Australia. And you would just be flooded. WWE would be professional wrestling. They would do what they did in the UK, which was essentially destroy the British wrestling scene. And you get NXT UK instead. And it was a very ambitious plan. And I feel like maybe now that it was revealed not long ago, Freddie Prince Jr. on his podcast, he's a former WWE writer, uh, also a former romantic comedy leading man which is a weird thing to mesh the two. He said that WWE a couple of years ago actually tried to sell themselves to Fox. They offered up seemingly a price tag that was too great for Fox and instead Fox decided to license SmackDown for their Friday nights. And it got me thinking, I wonder if they had thought that the idea was, hey, we want to be the end all be all in wrestling. 
that's something that we can sell to a prospective buyer. Maybe at that point when Fox says, no, we don't wanna buy you because you're too expensive, they said, okay, well, let's hire somebody, Nick Khan, who has Hollywood connections, who understands how to rebrand us into a sellable package. And then you start hearing the phrases, content creators. You start uh, hearing the, 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 the line that WWE uses in their conference calls now, we're much like Marvel, we're like the MCU, where each character is its own brand. Those are all concepts and ideas that I feel are being f used by WWE to make them more sellable. So they don't wanna be the end all be all in wrestling. They're allowing AEW to do that. They're letting impact, they're referencing impact now with you know Mickey James being in the Rumble because they don't care about being the end all be all in wrestling. They wanna be a, a, a focused content creation machine and they don't care about being everything in wrestling anymore. And that's why they don't care about NXT being able to compete with AEW. And so they just want to have a tightly focused content creation machine that they can then sell to NBC Universal, to Fox, whoever, for a large price tag. Um, so if the question is, if Triple H were to leave to start up a new promotion, like, is that something that Triple H would want to do at this point? seeing that everything's dead. I mean, I don't know what matters more to a person. Being cool with your father-in-law, completely dismantling your 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 creation or sacking up and being a man and doing your own thing. At that at his age after experiencing what he did, you got under you got to ask yourself what's my pri priority in life. I don't know. I don't know where he's coming from. Anyways, the answer is Keith Lee, Bray Wyatt, uh, you'd probably want to try to steal somebody from WWE, like a Seth Rollins or a Finn Balor, maybe. Probably a Finn Balor, because they're not doing much with him. Maybe a Shinsuke Nakamura. Certainly, possibly an Asuka. Um, and then just look at the free agent market. I want to do that in a more, more focused video where we take a look at the free agent market and uh, and and see who you... Because right now, the way the free, art, free agent market is, man, with AEW not really having a whole lot more room in their company for more high-profile free agents, you could totally create an amazing another other promotion rather another is not a word other promotion out of the free agent market right there and i've been rambling for eight minutes but uh the whole triple h situation is, is fascinating to me and uh and i'm gonna do an entire other video about that but i guess my major question is why would triple h stay with wwe at this point why would he if he has any sort of ego on him doesn't he just try to go and do his own thing at this point fuck the fi family dynamics it's, the money's his. He can do what he wants with his money. Fuck the fine family dynamics. I don't know. That's how I feel. Uh, let's see here. Dan the Animal, what do you think the most beneficial for Dominic Mysterio would be? Number one, stay on main roster and learn hands-on with the pros. Go to NXT and develop more away from his father. Request his release and work other indies, possibly sign with a different promotion. Or form a tag team with Walter, his clone. I would say stay on main roster and hope that they execute a storyline where you split from your dad, where you turn on Ray and you go heel on main roster. That's what I would think you do. If NXT 1.0 was still a thing, I would have actually said, try to get back down to NXT 1.0. But uh, 2.0 is not a good place for Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Red Tube asks, when Bray Wyatt comes back to wrestling, do you think he should be exclusive to one promotion or should he have like a cult-like faction like the flock where he tours promotions, forcing people to join his family? I think Bray Wyatt's too big of a name to go out on the indie circuit and do that, although I think that's a really good idea. Somebody else should do that. I think when he comes back to wrestling, it should be with AEW where he's going to have the freedom to do what he wants to do or he should join Triple H's brand new promotion. Uh, let's see here. Matthew David Hughes is insistent on asking me what my favorite biscuit is. My favorite, he considers it the half-coated hobnob. No, it's the McVitie's Digestive with milk chocolate. Megawad says if down the line AEW were to add one or two more hours of weekly television programming, how would you like that distributed? I don't want them to do that. I don't want them to add an hour to Dynamite. I do not want them to add an hour to Rampage. They have the perfect amount of what they have. So I would say, don't do that. I'm fine with this battle of the belts thing 
once a quarter doing a Battle of the Belts thing, make that into a bigger thing, perhaps a two-hour TNT special on a Saturday in between the pay-per-view months. I think that'd be good. Uh, Deep Voice Dude, do you think AEW will always be a fan service based promotion that caters exclusively to the internet wrestling community or, or will Tony Khan ever try to capture the mainstream non diehard that Vince McMahon craves, even if it means sacrificing some diehards? I don't think AEW is a fan service based promotion that caters exclusively to the internet wrestling community. I don't think that's what AEW does. I think that bringing people over like the Undisputed Era bringing people over like Moxley in the beginning. And I think if WWE continues high profile releases, they're going to continue to try to get people that a W that WWE has already built a brand around. And I think that's how you cater to the mainstream. I think another way you do it is by, uh, stepping up their major pay-per-views like all out and maybe double or nothing to become stadium shows. Maybe you do one stadium show a year, 60,000 people in attendance, show that you can com- so show that you're a big deal. Show that you can put on big shows like the WWE does, not the big show, but big shows like the WWE does. And when you do that, yeah, maybe plunk down some money for some mainstream crossover names. Try to do what WWE did back during the Attitude Era with a Mike Tyson, but not Mike Tyson now. And not like a Logan Paul or something like that. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Chris Dalby. Do you think we've reached a new status quo where WWE continues to be number one for the next few years with AEW trailing? Or do you think there could be a realignment over the next few years? Let's extrapolate this five years. If you've noticed a trend over the last five years, WWE has been on a downward trend with their ratings and viewership. um, And there's not enough data to suggest what AEW is going to do. So I don't know. I think that if AEW continues to grow their brand in a positive way and WWE continues to do what they do and, 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 and lose viewership, then I think it's possible that five years from now, things will be a little bit more even. On the other hand, I think that within two or three years, WWE will have sold. So there's no telling what they're going to be doing at that point. I think the space is probably too volatile to really understand what's going to happen. WWE still has the most money to offer talent. Uh, they've got the most mainstream appeal now. They they just, they just they need to connect on a mainstream level. Um, I think they can both coexist. I don't think it has to be a one and two thing, but I do think that it's kind of crazy that a company like WWE that's 10 times bigger than AEW is only maintaining a lead in the overall viewership on, a, on, on you know, Mondays versus Wednesdays of... On, on similar type stations, on similar type cable channels, they're only really maintaining a lead of like, what, 500,000, half a million, something like that. Maybe a little bit more than that. I think WWE needs to step up their game and trying to get that mainstream crossover thing. AEW is still a long way from doing that, but WWE certainly has fallen off the sort of popular radar where they used to be 10, 15 years ago. Um, so I... I I don't know. It's still too early to tell if uh, WWE is going to be able to stave off AEW. One thing that WWE should be worried about is is AEW's ascent devaluing WWE's product or is is AEW's ascent simply increasing AEW's own worth? Is it bringing down the value of WWE? If WWE goes and says to, you know, NBC Universal, "Hey, You know, we're worth a lot. We're worth a billion dollars. Could they look at AEW and say, well, AEW is almost doing your numbers and they're only getting 40 million a year. So, no, you're actually worth less. That's something to think about, I would think. Anyways, it's been 15 minutes. I answered a bunch of your questions. I'm going to answer more next week. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, Check out one of these other videos where I answer other questions or don't. In other words, or in any event, give this video a thumbs up. It's weekend. I'm going to go do some stuff. Bye, everybody.